definitely want to come out with a guide at January 1st. I hope to do it seasonally, so every three months, but this one will be winter, of course. Some winter meals ideas and pantry staples and winter Mediterranean diet habits and like interactive PDFs for you to fill out. We have not seen the sun <laughs> for maybe 10 days. It's starting to like just be really, really crappy. <laughs> you have to work harder to find that joy, that sunshine, because when it's so gray for so long and the days are so short, it's just hard. It just is. Most of all, this gray weather has made it like really hard for me to film. I never want to tell you what you should be eating and how much and what time of day. The Mediterranean diet is such a flexible thing. That's why I call it modern Mediterranean living is because you can adapt it to your lifestyle. I just want you to take inspiration from this. So maybe just take it for enjoyment, not for literal things, you know? I wake up and I get organized with my life. I kind of slowly plan out my day, look at my week, look if I'm on, on track with all my projects, kind of let any creative thoughts flow so I kind of give myself an hour but I try not to eat anything I just try to drink a lot of water and then I go to the gym to get that out of the way just get some kind of movement in um, I don't always recommend the gym but right now this time of year especially if you live where it is cold it's harder to be outside I could always count on the gym as a place to get movement in and then I finally get some breakfast in I've been doing coffee with milk this is actually protein milk because i'm always trying to amp up my protein since i live a more fitness kind of lifestyle i have a lot of fitness goals it's very common in the mediterranean to drink your milk and coffee only in the mornings and i think that's a, such a good thing is because i've been seeing you know so many viral tiktoks saying like oh my stomach issues i always have stomach issues and I think a huge thing is our massive giant freaking coffees and I'm to blame. A ton of coffee on your stomach is not the best. You won't see a bigger cup than like five or six ounces of coffee in, in the Mediterranean really. Unless of course it's paired with milk. Keep it in this container so I can close it up and try to keep it as hot as possible as I sip it. And then for breakfast, I'm queen of pastry. Like I know it's not seen as like healthy-ish breakfast, but like I just, I love a pastry. And I try to make more healthy pastries, I do. But this was a total, total fail, total fail test recipe. And I don't think I show you guys that enough. Like I fail so much with my recipes, especially baking. Almost always baking I fail the first time. In this one, I tried to use my favorite vegan protein powder called Sprout living and bake these kind of like spiced shortbread cookies because I had this container of my favorite granola butter from Oat House and I wanted to use it up because it was expiring and so it was more of just like a pantry clean out trying to make like a protein spiced vanilla oaty cookie it tastes like chalk dust it literally just dries up my whole mouth like I tried to break it apart and you can see the like dust just crumbles off of it it was terrible but one I don't throw away food so of course I'm gonna eat them I'm not okay it's not so terrible that I can't swallow them of course i can actually eat them but would i ever you know publish that recipe never and this is another reason why i don't like to do full day of eatings because behind the scenes i'm eating as much leftovers as i can in one bowl that makes no sense i just throw all my leftovers in a bowl and just try to keep deleting them or i'll make a lot of recipes that fail and just need to eat the remnants that i throw in the freezer because I need to keep moving on and trying new recipes and new recipes. That was what I had for breakfast, but normally a succeeding recipe looks a lot like over su the summer, I made a protein banana bread that turned out delicious. And so I tried to make a protein pumpkin bread. I've made it so many times. I was obsessed with it all October and November. I was making it on repeat. I made it in bars. So I just used like a nine by nine pan or I made a loaf pan of it. So I was really into the hot. Um, making like protein pumpkin bread and then um, I retested a recipe that I made in Italy last year which are these like oatmeal cookie apple bars delicious they turned out incredible as well retested them kind of coated the, the apples and some cinnamon sugar because all of October November I was still you know getting rid of lots of apples that I had picked so much uh, my mom had picked so much I had picked so much so we were just trying to get rid of the apples and like they were super chewy and gooey so those are like normally when I do succeed <laughs> the kind of recipes that I'm eating 
thing in the morning with my coffee is I'm eating a pastry. So I actually had the three of those cookies this morning. And then I also have some fruit. I try to. Persimmons are in season. I love persimmons. And they're coming more and more popular here in America, but they're still kind of hard to find. And you want to wait till they're like super jammy because they just... Oh, they're just so delicious when they're jammy. And there's so many ways I love to eat them with like cinnamon sprinkles on top, honey. Sometimes because they're so jammy, I'll do like a dollop of yogurt, maybe a sprinkle of granola or something like that. So I try to get my fruit in too in the morning just because if I'm already seeing something sweet, might as well do that. Sometimes if I'm starving in the mornings when I wake up before I go to the gym or get my movement in, I will have snack on some fruit because fruit is also like a really like fast digesting piece of so sometimes you really do want to eat fruit alone because if you eat some stuff before it and then it pushes everything through it can give you a stomach ache or if you have coffee which like is very strong and then you have fruit that's very strong it can give you a stomach ache so those are just some tips sometimes if i'm really in a rush and i don't have like any baked goods prepped i do love overnight oats i always have greek yogurt in the fridge i always have oats when i had pumpkin butter all of october <laughs> i had so much pumpkin butter i just put in some pumpkin butter a little bit extra sweetener a little bit extra spices greek yogurt oats dash of milk and you have um overnight oats Sometimes I throw in nuts and chia seeds and flax seeds and kind of just pantry clean out stuff. You have some leftover jam. Jam is a great way to use up jam in overnight oats because it's so sweet and then you use that plain whole milk Greek yogurt or like 2% so you're getting your fats and all that stuff. And then I also sauteed some apples with some cinnamon and brown sugar and uh, a little bit of butter and then used apple cider as the sweetener for the oats. Some apple pie oats. Like have fun with it. I'm gonna um, get back to work here for the rest of the morning. So I will see you back in the kitchen for some lunch. For lunch, I decided to do a quick and easy 30 minute meal. It's so delicious and it's a riff off this trendy meal that's on TikTok right now, which is from this company called Joe and Juice. It's called like a tunicado. It's really, like really yummy, crispy bread sandwich thing, flatbread thing with pesto and tuna and tomatoes and all this stuff. And so I decided to make my own. This bread is like my go-to. I've made it before, kind of another version of it called ripple bread in one of my recipe videos over the summer. But it's kind of like a pita non-ish copycat, but it's so easy because all you have to do is mix together like three ingredients, water, olive oil, flour, and Greek yogurt. It's so high in protein because flour has protein, that Greek yogurt has protein, and you just knead it for quite a while until it gets like soft and really smooth and kind of just feels good <laughs> sometimes you just know when bread is ready and then you just let it rest for 20 minutes and then we'll get to how you cook it in a second but then you prep the you do the dishes and then you prep the tuna so i'm just doing it so simple just some tuna smashed with some pesto this pesto is coming in a january video so i'm sorry i can't share it right now but it's a sage uh walnut pesto it's dairy free it's really creamy but also chunky from like the nuts and everything in it and the herbs and it the sage really comes through it's a very hearty wintry delicious pesto and then paired with that tuna it adds all of the flavor adds a lot of moisture because you're getting that coconut yogurt that's in there because it's dairy free i know the bread's not dairy free but uh stick with me i'm i know i get all over the place sometimes with my recipes but hey i wanted to use up what i had and then i also added some really yummy uh chewy sun-dried tomatoes because you know i'm the queen of texture so the more the better but i kept it really simple when I made the little tuna concoction there and then you just section off the bread into fours or the, the dough into fours and uh, roll out each one super thin on a hot skillet two to three minutes on each side and you have this really chewy yummy salty olive oily protein packed little flatbread ready to go and could be used for so many things and I paired it with a little bit more pesto just to add a little bit more flavor sauce to the whole thing a crunchy um, bitter arugula to cut through it all add a little vegetable could add a cucumber some tomatoes can melt some cheese on top for some more delicious goodness and it's just so easy and incredible and fish is so popular on the mediterranean diet it's eaten very often and it's so helpful to use canned like fish because it's cheap even high 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 quality fish can be really cheap and it's already ready to go and it's just such a great idea to use canned tuna or you know any other kind of canned fish or just fish in general i'm just fish and seafood really big on the mediterranean diet Okay, so I came all the way downstairs to taste test this because there was a lot of noise upstairs and I really wanted to do this on camera. And I have to leave for my meeting, so I'm gonna smell like tuna, which is just all around great because tuna is amazing. So I'm so excited to try this. The bread turned out incredible. Mmm. 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 Wow. This is so good. 
You guys, this is so good. This bread is so high in protein, so easy to make, takes 30 minutes. So much of that sage is coming through in the pesto. This is so good. And the tuna is not dry at all. The pesto adds so much flavor, so much moisture, so much goodness. The bright, bitter crunch of the arugula, the chewy, salty, sun-dried tomatoes. It's like something you wouldn't even imagine was made in like literally 20 minutes. You could prep the bread in advance and then just toast it up, roll it up. So good. All right, I'm gonna have another bite and then I gotta go. <laughs> I have a cute little tree and my coffee from this morning. Also, hello, look at this, my 10K balloons. Like, I want to keep them, but I don't know what to do with them. Such a happy memory, those 10K balloons. Got back from my meeting. In true Mediterranean style, you're never supposed to really rush when you're eating. That was literally the worst example I could have given as a Mediterranean lifestyle gal. I, I don't get it perfect every day. I far from get it perfect, actually. It, it's a lifestyle, so... Living life isn't always perfect, and so it's just always an ebb and flow. It definitely was not the best example to just scarf that down and rush out of here, but meeting went really well, and I'm glad that I made more time to work than I did to cook because I needed to work. Um, I did make time this afternoon, though, to bake a little bit because my mom needed me to make the dessert for our family dinner tonight, and it's one of my all-time favorite desserts ever. It's super time-consuming, but usually that means it's really, really delicious when it is time-consuming. Baklava, so good. <laughs> Sheets of filo dough. You layer each one with lots of butter, and then you put in half of this pistachio, walnut, cinnamon, clove, sugar mixture, and then you keep layering the filo and the butter, and then you do another nut mixture and then a final layer of phyllo so you need to like section off your stack of phyllo into thirds and then I like pistachios and walnuts you could also use like hazelnuts or almonds it's just one of my favorite favorite desserts and then I make a nice orangey honey syrup that is not really traditional I think it's like lemon juice that goes in I don't know if orange is really traditional I love a lot of orange in it and I feel like it just adds a zesty goodness to it <laughs> so baklava is is so good and I I had to make that as soon as I got back from the meeting because it needs to sit after it's baked with that syrup for at least an hour or like two or three is better. Definitely wanted to get that out of the way. And we're having carbonara tonight. True Romana pasta. I'm gonna be making the massive salad and the dessert. <laughs> of all things I'm in charge of, it's the sweets and the salad. So I'll be making a salad with this vinaigrette that I had made for a video. I know I already said that that pesto is coming and um, a recipe video in January and so is this vinaigrette and it's more of like a sauce that can be a lot of things because it already has a lot of stuff in it like olives and almonds and cherries and it's kind of a riff off a of Sicilian agro dolce and that rest whole recipe is coming in that same recipe video in, in uh, January but I wanted to get rid of it now because I need to film an, an, another recipe video next week so I just wanted to use it up and it's just so easy so literally all I have to do now for this dinner to help out is make a big massive bowl of greens put all of that fun dressing in it and some feta and call it a day. So we have a little Greek, Sicilian, Roman vibes going tonight. You know, a little Mediterranean dinner with the fam. It's so fun. Very also Mediterranean to sit down with some tea to like recoup. I need some quiet time after the day that I've had, which is so important. I mean, as much as it's important to socialize and be with your community and everything like that, you also deserve that recharge time where you're not necessarily scrolling or wasting time but you're recharging with your time so whether that's you know working on a hobby or painting writing reading sipping tea and listening to a podcast uh, organizing something just kind of just letting your mind be not so heavy and your thoughts not be so rushed but anyways i know so many people are really just here for food. If you're really just here for food, go ahead and skip to the timestamp because I know that people have been lately actually calling me out for how chatty I am. You're just here for Mediterranean diet food, recipes, all that jazz, timestamp. Little life update. Last we talked, I had hit 10K. <laughs> and now it's grown even more in like a month or so. I feel like no creators really talk about their growth and how they honestly deal with it. Maybe it happened so quickly for other creators and it's still happening pretty slow for me or maybe I'm just not watching the right things. But I don't want to spread negativity or anything like that. The growth is scary and overwhelming. It's what I've wanted and dreamed of for I can't tell you how long. And I feel like I can lean on you guys, like the ones that I know are still watching right now. So I don't really know how to take what's the difference between people just being jerks and 
sharing their opinions on social media and what I should take as good feedback into consideration and what should I not take into consideration because I should stay true to who I am and make myself original and authentic. So I've had a lot of comments recently of like, I'm too chatty and I never shut up and I talk with my hands and it's so distracting. I know the whole hair thing in the beginning of my recipe videos back in 2020, I know the hair thing was terrible. I, then, since then, always try to pull my hair back when I'm cooking, I don't touch it. I know that was a terrible mistake that I had made. I own it in any way that I can, any comments that I still get and will always get. But something like, you talk with your hands too much. <laughs> it's who I am. Like talking with my hands is like how I am. It's just who I am. And like, I don't want to unlearn a part of who I am and it's part of my culture. And, and, and if I'm too chatty, well, what makes Caroline Caroline is their stories and the little things that I add here and there and I don't know. And I'm really, really, really scared to release any products. So I, I finally created, or I'm in the process of creating merch. In my next vlog, I'll actually be able to show you more samples. I've already showed you the tote bag. I got some cute little uh, stickers, um, which I love dearly. My fish and my main logo here. So I'm getting this merch and I actually wanna come out with a guide January 1st. I hope to do it seasonally, so every three months, but this one will be winter, of course. Some winter meals ideas and pantry staples and winter Mediterranean diet habits and like interactive PDFs for you to fill out and like a little guide that you can download for like $5. It's to the point now where I need to make money to be make my career work here on YouTube and, and do other things and get to the point where I can do other things than YouTube. But I'm so terrified of like releasing something and you guys don't like love it and I disappoint you and I upset you. And so that's why I love, love, love your comments. Like when you guys comment and share with me and talk to me, it helps me so much more than you could ever imagine because I, I have no coworkers to kind of feed back on. And I have no like boss to tell me, yeah, you should, be releasing a guide. No, no one really wants your guide. And so that's why I just, I, I'm so, so, so grateful for your comments and your feedback. Some really good, happy things is I've been really prioritizing just doing things that are out of my comfort zone, trying new things. I'm all about supporting small local businesses. The number one thing about the Mediterranean lifestyle and what makes it so sustainable is how local everything is. There's chains, of course, in the Mediterranean, but still, even with all the chains that are in the Mediterranean, mom and pop shops, small, tiny businesses that have like one or two locations are still majority. And so I go out of my way and kind of hate going to any big, massive chains anytime. So I go out of my way to find all my small businesses when it comes to coffee shops or dinner. If I'm gonna spend money, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna support small businesses. So if I go shopping for clothes, I search out boutiques. Maybe it's more expensive, but I'm helping those businesses as opposed to helping Nordstrom or don't get me wrong, I love Nordstrom and Anthropology and all of them. I do, and I have my days where I do shop there, but I try my best to shop smaller. <laughs> Eat more local farmer's markets and local restaurants and things like that. Something new that I picked up was ice skating and I hate how bad I am at it. I am a bull in a china shop, so why would I ever be good at ice skating? I have so many bruises and pain throughout my body from it, but I progressed and I actually got better, but I still look <laughs> ridiculous. I'm like an absolute hooligan on that ice. And you know what? I'm probably gonna go again this weekend because I'm determined to at least be able to glide and seem like I know what I'm doing. And that's just an example of like movement even during the winter time. Yeah, I know it's cold outside. You gotta work a little bit harder. But during the summer, there's other things you need to work harder at. There's a season and there's flow and there's things that change. And so right now, the thing that's harder during the winter is getting your body moving and getting outside because summer, it's just so easy. So that's our challenge in the winter. And it's up to us to figure out how we're gonna, you know, move every day, move our body because it's so important to the Mediterranean lifestyle. And lastly, to cut off this huge life rant update, the coolest thing ever happened in November and it made my year, honestly. I mean, I mean, so many things that happened this year made my year, but my best friend Hannah came to visit for Thanksgiving. I'm at the airport actually in a lot right now waiting because Hannah is here. My best friend that I met in Italy, who's from Germany, who I went to go visit this past spring in Atlanta, where she's currently being an au pair. She's now visiting me for Thanksgiving. So she's here. She's getting her bag right now. I'm going to go pick her up. She's never had a Thanksgiving. 
And so, of course, she hasn't. She's from Germany. So I think it's going to be so fun to be here in, like, the Midwest and experience such a true Thanksgiving. I've missed the last two Thanksgivings. I was in Arizona two years ago, and so I couldn't spend Thanksgiving with my family. And then I was in Italy last year, and I had the most epic Italian-American Thanksgiving I could. And it was so fun, but it's nice to be back to... America and have my traditional Thanksgiving. So as you guys can already imagine, I'm gonna be bringing so many dishes <laughs> to the Thanksgiving. But anyways, I'm so excited and so grateful. Your community is literally everything. I say it in every single vlog. It's such a huge part of the Mediterranean lifestyle, like embracing the more the merrier. Everyone's invited, everyone's included. I'm so excited that my friend is here. I just, I've missed her a lot and I'm just gonna love the companionship for the next week. And so that's the little update. We are at the mall now. We're gonna go Christmas shopping. And we've just done lots of Christmassy things. She speaks to me in German and I have no idea what she's saying and I love it. Um, and then I speak to her in Italian. You never speak back Italian. Because I can't. Yes, you can. You just, it's easier to then respond in German to yeah. me. Siehst du, it's einfacher. So, let's go shopping. I just said goodbye to Hannah. I just dropped Hannah off at the airport. I hate, 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 hate saying goodbye. I never think it's gonna hurt as bad as it does. It is the most beautiful like blessing in the world having family and friends all over, but when you just get to have to say goodbye to them, it just, it breaks my heart. But there is nothing I would have wanted more than for her to come. So this little like pain and sadness that I'm feeling that I don't get to see my friends so often is worth it for when I do get to see her. So now I'm just gonna try to stay busy. The distraction is the best way to get through kind of the sadness of having to say goodbye to people. I'm gonna go watch some football. It's a Saturday. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Zestful time to be alive. I am just filled with so much zest. Let's watch Ohio State play Michigan.
cheers to a zestful life and creating a zestful day. It is 9.07, I'm exhausted, <laughs> and I just am so grateful right now. So anyways, I'm gonna wash my face and get ready for bed. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed and got some kind of value out of it. And until next time, I hope you create a very, very zestful day. Ciao.